The Avengers must expand their ranks. They have created a competition for the stars of the NBA. Curry, bang! Only one will stand side by side with the Avengers. When I say attack the rim, that's what I mean. When Marvel and ESPN team up for Warriors, Pelicans, and Marvel's Arena of Heroes. Anyone who knows me knows that is pretty much the most exciting thing I've heard about all year. All right, welcome back to The Jump. We are now thrilled to be joined by friend of the show and the author of Bubble Ball, Inside the NBA's Fight to Save a Season, Washington Post National NBA writer Ben Golliver. Welcome in. A little bubble reunion here Ooh. with me and Malika. Yeah, we're the <laughs> alumni club. It feels great. Woo. Thanks for having me. Do we get stickers, pins, T-shirts? we got to work that out after the show. All the above. Exactly. <laughs> ben, you've been covering the NBA since 2007. What was it about the 2020 season that motivated you to write your first book? Well, to me, it just seemed like it was going to be one of the most important years in NBA history. When you look back at the Hong Kong controversy, mm. Kobe Bryant's tragic death, the shutdown with the pandemic in March, and this incredible comeback plan to try to stage the Disney World, you add all that up, there was just so many layers to it. I mean, this is a basketball book first, but it's a political story because you have a, a presidential election campaign going on. It's a social justice activism story because of all the players' uh, protests along the way. It's a public health story. Um, and I think it's a business story, too, and we're talking about billions of dollars at stake. Yeah, and look, inside the bubble, too, it was a superstar story, right? We had a couple larger-than-life figures that you really highlight throughout the book. I was so interested in how you talked about Jimmy Butler, LeBron James. How did you see those two huge forces of personality shape what was going on inside? Well, the bubble was for the grinders. That's how I always saw it. I mean, it was day after day. I was there 93 <laughs> days, and trust me, I was counting every single one. I know Malika was there longer than me, and she was counting, too. And I think it really came down to the guys who had the most competitive spirit. We saw all sorts of teams fold. The Philadelphia 76, Los Angeles Clippers, the Houston Rockets. But the Miami Heat didn't fold in large part because of Jimmy Butler. Mm. And I'll never forget uh, in the NBA Finals when uh, you know, he keeps extending these series and everybody's hopping back on the media bus saying, hey, we're ready to go home. But one guy who wasn't ready to go home was Jimmy. And I think that you saw him just exhausted on the sideline after some of those games, 40-point triple-doubles. And it was really the peak moment of his career to date. Yeah, and look, Malika, you were there for more than 100 days. And, and that idea, right, of that survival of the fittest, if you were inside the bubble, I mm. think the coverage felt a little bit different from those of us inside than some of the people outside, especially when, say, Paul George was talking about mental health issues or the way some of the social justice issues, yeah. civil rights issues, affected people when they were in that crucible environment. What moment stood out most to you now that we have, thankfully, a little distance from that experience? <laughs> Oh, man, it's hard to pick just one. I think, you know, listening to Ben talk and, and, and reading his book, I was thinking about Jimmy Butler when he was laying his hands over yeah. the, the stanchion on the sidelines, just looking utterly exhausted. I mean, that's how it felt for so many of us, because as Ben writes about, as he just talked about, it wasn't just the basketball that happened in the bubble. The things that stand out to me is everything else that was happening surrounding it, especially because, as you both know, when we first got down there, we weren't really, there was still, there weren't the, the words quarantine mm -hmm. and social distancing and shelter in place and stay at home. All of those things didn't really quite, they hadn't had quite sunk in yet, sunk in yet, right? It was something that we were all still getting used to, this alternate reality. And so what stands out to me thinking about all of it is how much people had to put their own fears, their own thoughts about the unknown aside in order to go into the bubble and do their jobs, whether that was playing basketball, whether that was reporting, whether that was producing, whatever that was that was front and center in the bubble and having to put all of those fears aside every single day to do a job to provide entertainment that's what's going to stick with me for a very very long time and I think Ben's right I think the NBA for many many years is going to be thought of in pre and post bubble terms <laughs> absolutely Ben one thing I really liked is that it is not just the big picture story of the NBA all the big issues that you talk about but some of the details about what it was like to actually live in that Malika and I spent weeks trying to get a pizza um, we could not get a pizza until they put it on the room service menu for like the final two weeks ordering a pizza to get it delivered inside the bubble required so many steps and then when we finally got the pizza we were not allowed to use a pizza cutter because that was not sanitized ben what was the <laughs> most sort of off court kind of thing for you that stands out about things that you could or couldn't have in your daily life that well, you didn't even quite realize till you got down there and you were like oh i guess i will not have in my case pizza for several months <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I want to stand up for all the players who said how hard it was because when I was down there, I mean, I put on weight. Uh, my stress level anxiety was way up, sleeping terribly. I felt the feelings of isolation being 3,000 miles away from my parents and not being able to see them for more than a year. So it was absolutely challenging. I mean, I'm right there with you. I mean, I, I, I was so happy when I had my first pizza, but I kept getting this brown veggie <laughs> meatloaf. I felt like it was like night after night, I kept getting it on the vegetarian menu. So I actually would just text pictures of that because it looked so disgusting to my friends just to kind of mess with them and, and show them how rough we were living there in the bubble. But one thing I remember during the shutdown when the Bucks actually had their protest, um, I remember there was nothing for the players to do for the first time in more than a month. Right. And there was mm. a back parking lot, totally empty. And I saw Kawhi Leonard just spinning mm. circles in a golf cart like he was a 75-year-old retired, uh, <laughs> you know, Central Florida resident because, you know, he finally had a, a moment Amazing. to himself and there was nothing he could do. He couldn't drive a car. He couldn't well, walk down the road. And, of course, this is a guy who takes helicopters to games, right? So it's a little <laughs> bit of a different lifestyle, I think. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.